Hey, After Buzz, thank you oh for God. checking us out. We're here with Karina for Spotlight On, and I'm so excited to have her in the studio. She's a dear friend of mine. And check her out in a new movie, Suicide Squad. So let's go. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. <laughs> This is our song. Oh, we're on? Yes. <laughs> She's new to the After Buzz Studio, guys. But this is one of our favorite songs, so we're going to let it play a little bit. Ooh. Yes, Alicia Keys. <laughs> Hello, After Buzzers. Thank you for joining us with Spotlight On. I am here with my girl, my friend, my sister, Karina Calderon. How's that? Did I say that right? Calderon. Thank you. She's been correcting me, I swear, for like the last 10 <laughs> minutes, and I've been trying to get it right. I was rolling my R's, sound, sounding good. ridiculous. Thank you so much. It's okay. So, we have so much to talk about because if you have not seen Suicide Squad yet, then you're living under a rock or something because it's only like the biggest film out right now, right? Mm -hmm. It grossed what, over. Number one, number one movie in the world. Number one. And I, this weekend, too. That's Three amazing. Three weekends in a row. That is amazing. And she, we're going to get into the part that she plays in the movie a little bit later, but she stars in it. We're going to start with our hashtags. You can find me on Erica J. Green at all social medias, uh, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Karina, tell us where we can check you out. Oh, yeah. Um, Instagram, it's uh, Miss Cori Calderon. <laughs> Um, I love the way you said that. Miss Cody Calderon. <laughs> um, uh, and that was my Instagram. Facebook, Karina Calderon. And then my Twitter is uh, Miss Cody Calderon, too. Okay. Okay. And this is going to be your camera. Okay. <laughs> She's new to our studios, our new studios, which are lovely. So, yeah, let's get right into the interview. Karina, I'm just going to warn y'all right now, there's going to be a lot of laughing and just a lot of kidding Giggling around. Giggling like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> she's one of my good friends and I actually met her in an acting class like a long time ago and when I saw her act I was blown away Shut this girl up. is an amazing seriously Karina I'm come like on now we talk about this all she's an amazing talent she can act she can do everything and she's pretty as a peach and she's from Texas who doesn't like a Texas gal come on now so, um, Karina, before we get into Suicide Squad, I actually want to talk about some of the other projects that you did. Um, your breakout role, a Sundance film, which is incredible. I don't know if y'all know the politics of Sundance, but that's like one in a, a million to have a film in Sundance. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that was back in 2011. It was my first role in a film. Uh, I booked that in Texas. So, yeah, it was, um, we got into Sundance in the... Uh, the competition, um, yeah, 2011. That's crazy. How, how was that experience, like, going to some... That's, like, one of my dreams, personally. So it was surreal. It was really surreal. Um, I mean, you just... You audition for stuff, you work on stuff, and then there's, like, projects like this that were just really, really, like, close to my heart. The story was amazing. And um, being at Sundance was a dream come true. I know you were the lead in the film. How is that being the lead of a, a a breakout film? And wasn't that a role that they had you as like the next breakout star? You did some panels and stuff like that. I, I remember did. You telling it was me, about. me and two other actresses. It was Britt Marling and Ada Perro uh, Oda. She was on a yeah, Twelve Years, 12 yeah, 12 12 years, years a Slave. Slave yeah. yeah, it was us three. We it's were so actually cool. the three actresses there uh, who were selected to do this panel, Breakthrough Actresses. I know we talked a little bit that you're a fellow Texas girl like me. I'm from Dallas. Where are you from, Karina? I know Austin. where you're from. Tell them where you're from. Austin. <laughs> I grew like, up Erica. in Austin. <laughs> She's looking at me like, Erica, you know where I'm from. But I know no. our audience wants yeah, to Yeah, no, you. I grew up in Austin. <laughs> Already. So let's get into some more work that you've done. You have some projects coming out. Callie um, Killer. Callie the Killer mm -hmm. with Richard Cabral. Yeah, my friend, uh, you can catch him right now. He's uh, on American, well, he was on American Crime and just recently uh, will be appearing on, well, get actually recurring on, um, what is it? Um, I heard he had a new show. Not MacGyver, one of the newer ones. Um, so he's not going to be on American Crime? Lethal Weapon, I'm sorry. Lethal Weapon. I'm like, yeah. Lethal Weapon. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. Did, I did read that somewhere. Is he still going to be on American Crime? That's the know. show that I did after show, if y'all want to check that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, he was a series regular, and then um, 
recurring. So I don't know. He might be back for the third season as well. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Are you playing his wife on there, or what, what's your relationship with him? On Cali the, the Killer? Th- yes. Uh, actually, yeah, the love interest. Oh, we, um, he's my ex-boyfriend who we are kind of rekindling. Ooh. The old flame, I guess. Yeah. That sounds really interesting. I, re- I really want to check that it was, out. It was amazing working with him. I met him uh, on the set of End of Watch when I worked with David Ayer the first time. And now we've stayed friends ever since. Okay, so now that we're talking about End of Watch, which I saw you in also, and you're phenomenal, like you are in everything. She seriously is. You have to check out End of Watch to see her. So you worked with David Ayer in End of Watch, who is also the director of Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. So tell me about that relationship and tell me how it connected you with being a part of this project. Uh, well, I met him on uh, End of Watch. And then after End of Watch, um, fast forward a few years later, uh, yeah, he offered me the role uh, as Grace of Grace as Diablo's wife um, on Suicide Squad a few years later from working with him on End of Watch. Wow. I mean, that that's crazy. You didn't have to audition or anything. You no. went straight to offer. What's that like? You know, being able to just... <laughs> you're big oh. time now. <laughs> yeah. Big time. She was shocked. No, really? Big so... Time. Did you raise the roof? I said, big time. <laughs> big time, Karina. No. <laughs> Um, I did, I I did, I raised the roof. I don't know where that came from. Um, what was, well, getting that offer at that moment was one of those, like we were talking about earlier, it was one of those like life affirming, Mm -hmm. awakening, aha, like, I mean, it gets, it gets tough in this business, in any business, right? But, oh, my gosh, there's just those days where you're just like, what am I doing? Who am I kidding? This is, just isn't going to happen for me. Like, why am I – why do I keep throwing myself up against a wall? But I was having one of those moments where I was like, you know what? I really need to just think about something else to do with my life. I'm going back to Texas. Um, what else can I do? Like, there's some, there has to be something. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, no, this is what you're supposed to do. It was, it was yeah. that type of – type of period of time in my life and um i was just like i'm done i i I need to stop kidding myself Mm -hmm. and my manager at the time called me that we had gotten the offer for something and the casting director was like i can't tell you much she's like but i promise it's a good one and we were just like okay (laughs) a great one yeah i mean that's the number one film just only the number one film here yeah whatever in the world yeah it's crazy (laughs) i mean we talk, we talk a lot about how hard this industry is, and I know some of our viewers, they might be actors, or they might just, you know, want to know the behind the scenes of being an actress and stuff like that. When you're hitting the ground, you're going to auditions, and you, you know, you're, you're thinking, what what am I doing this for? And yeah. you, you get something like a huge offer from David Ayers. I David just, Ayer. I, Ayers. How, what is your mind frame at that point? Are you like, okay, well, maybe this is something that's that's for me. You know, if I can get called in for a role like this, I mean, the possibilities are endless. You were on the on set with, like, legends. How was that like? What was that like? To get the offer? To get the offer and then be on set working, actually doing the job. What was that, that like? That was also surreal <laughs> and another dream come true. I remember I was talking to my sisters, and I told them, I was like, this is happening, and I'm awake. Um, wow. Because they know, they know how hard I've worked and... Yeah. What I've sacrificed, what we've sacrificed, you know, how what it's been like. But um, yeah, when I was like, oh my God, I'm here in Canada and I'm on set with Will Smith and Jared Leto, and Crazy. my sister was like, oh my God, Jared Leto, and I was like, yeah, the freaking Fresh Prince of Bel Air, you know. It was, it was. Really you did cool. it, dude. You're like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah, I did. Yeah, when because David was really nice. They were all really cool. I was introduced to most, almost all of them. I love it. Because even when we weren't filming, I was just hanging out on set with David, just watching them film their scenes. I just wanted to be on the set, but I would sit with him next to him in like the director's chair and watch the monitors, and um, yeah, just watching them work. I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Like I'm just gonna sit, I'm just gonna chill right here and watch freaking. Jared Leto do the scene real quick. <laughs> just, just watch Jared Leto yeah. be the Joker. How do you do that? I mean, you can read books and you can go to classes, but how much knowledge do you get from just watching other actors that you admire and maybe look up to, and you're just sitting there and you're, I mean, of course you're, you're having that aha moment, like, wow, this is, this is actually happening to me right now. Yeah. But learning, also the learning, tell us a little bit about what that was like. Just <gasps> Sorry, excuse me. Because we talked about it a little bit. Oh. Oh my God, that was 
watching Jared Leto, and I, I was asked this before, but oh my God, watching Jared Leto, like, just go for it as the Joker really gave me even more of the permission to be like, you know what? the the hell with it go for it like and when it was time to do my scenes I was like hell yeah I'm ready to go I just wanted to like jump in and just like play be part of all of that it was a lot of fun I loved watching him he's so just in it bold in it big just crazy just good committed I mean I was like I'm ready to go so a, a little bit about your character. You played Diablo's wife, and Diablo was the fire thrower for those who haven't seen it yet, which you need to see it today because I saw it twice. It's that good. It's so entertaining. It really is a great film. But it, and it's action-packed. But just um, how was it like preparing for that role? Because it was it was kind of like a turning point for his character. You know, that was you were part of the reason why, your character was part of the reason why he wasn't using you know, his abilities in the beginning, you were kind of like a big catalyst to what his character was going through. And when they brought it out of him, that was like kind of a moment where people kind of sat back like, wow, you, you know, I don't want to give away the movie, but it was a, it was a lot for his, yeah. for his character. So was what was so that like? Cool. Oh man. Preparing for a role like that and then well, shooting it with such an intense actor. Too. There was no preparing and there was, there was <laughs> no preparing. There was no preparing. I didn't even work. No. <laughs> I did, but at the very last minute, like I said, I got the offer and they told, they let me know very, very little of what I was going to be doing. And like literally when I got to Canada, they drove me to set to meet up with David for him to tell me what I was going to be doing. That's great. <laughs> you didn't tell me this. That, that's actually, that's crazy. Yeah. And so what we did was when I got to set, he played, he did some, he, we watched some playbacks mm-hmm. and he was like, we're going to be placing you here in the flame. You know, I did motion capture. So cool. So when Diablo in the film is like, has the flame and the, there's like someone dancing, that's me. That's tiny Karina dancing. Tiny little dancing <laughs> yeah, Karina. That's actually flames. her in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did motion capture for that. And he told me, we're going to be placing you here. You're going to be doing this. Um, they actually cut a lot of my scenes short. I was talking to another friend about that earlier today. And I was like, it's like they took all my scenes and like took little snippets and put them all into like one medium big scene. Mm-hmm. Two all scenes. Good. Yeah, actually two. Two scenes. But even that second one, I, it was like a whole, I was like, hey, you forgot the blood. And then the blah, blah, blah. I was like, man. But, um. Yeah, no, the preparation was very minimal because I knew nothing until I got to set and they kept it that way. This movie was so on the hush-hush about yes. so much that, yeah, we had to just really be careful. It, it was a huge film. You might think that it was a small, they cut and it was small, but every time you popped up there, it just, it gave me so much life. And I don't, I'm sure other people were affected by that. People you know, people back home and stuff like yeah. that. Every time you popped up, I was like, oh, that's what that's my friend. Who can I tell this? Oh, oh they don't care. Crazy, <laughs> I'm right? over here like filming it, like on my Snapchat. I'm like, yeah, that's my girl Karina. And just being someone who's seen your growth as far as an actress and as a, a, a person, and it's just it's amazing to watch. And I don't I don't know if you know this, but any role, especially one of this magnitude, being such a huge film, is it's inspiring. It's Thank inspiring you. to, you know, to see someone who's from Texas, a Texas girl. So now other Texas girls can see you yeah. and be like, you know what? Maybe I can go for what I want to do that's, No matter how I can't big imagine. or scary or who tells you, know? you that, oh, really? Oh, you're going to be an actress for real? I'm like, <laughs> really yeah. yeah. I'm sure of some of those people are probably like, damn, she was for real. <laughs> she wasn't joking. <laughs> Dang, that was Karina, man. I remember I what she was like. I heard. <laughs> she was just trying to get like a little, like a little part on a <laughs> UT student film, just to be on set. You know? I love it. Oh my gosh, I love those stories and just and I, it's been great watching your personal growth. I mean, because like I said, you're you're a phenomenal actress. This is just the beginning for you. Like you'll be soon starting when your name popped up at the end. I was like so proud. Like. And you'll be soon seeing your name pop up in the beginning. The first one starring Karina and just keep that in perspective and everyone else can keep that in perspective. You know, that's, it's incredible. So, um, I also read somewhere that it, you know, you're one of the few Latina actresses that have been in a big Marvel film or any type of superhero film period. I mean, it's really hard, Mm -hmm. difficult to see minorities in those I type know. of films. We need to change that. Anyway, what what is that like to we you? We are what changing does that, that. Feel like to you when you're you're that's a huge representation. You know, it's like being the first minority power ranger, you know? Something, it's like you're yeah, you're right? that 
for everyone. So what is that? What is that like to you? What does mm-hmm. that feel like to you? Or what? It, how did the how does that resonate with you? It's it's humbling. It's empowering. It's mm-hmm. awakening. It's enforcing. It's it's a lot. And I didn't even honestly like I didn't even get this job and be like, oh my god, I'm a Latina and I'm on this big DC of comic course. movie. Yeah. No, people actually brought that up. Like people interviewing some of the press I've done mm-hmm. brought it up, and that's what made me be like, oh my gosh, this, this is, is bigger really an than, issue. Yeah. This is really something that wow. like people are like. You know, even with my role as the wife of one of the superheroes was like a, I would, I'm just like, you know what? No, like even to get more specific, like, yeah, we need a Mexican superhero woman, a wow, woman. Wow, man. We need a Mexican woman superhero. Just, <laughs> we, I need, Why to, not? I'm, uh, I need <laughs> yes. to be that. I need to stop putting it outside of myself. Yes. Yeah, no. I mean, I never really looked at it that far, that deep you know as much as i have lately when people bringing it up i was like oh my god and you know no i'm not the first i'm not saying i'm the first latina in a big movie superhero yeah i mean we have zoe zaldana we have rosario dawson who's like well a show you know a tv show but there's been yes there's been a handful a handful but the fact is a handful and no we we need to be the superheroes we need to be the leads in these movies not just the wife of or exactly No, but did that put things in perspective for you? Like, that goes beyond just being an actor. You know, just being an entertainment, being in the industry. When there are people coming up to you, wow, hi, I'm a Latina girl, and, you know, I'm just going to school right now. But I I saw you in that film, and I I think that's amazing. Wow, Mm -hmm. you're in this huge film with Mm -hmm. all these other actors, and you look like me. Mm -hmm. Does that, like, put things in perspective for you? Yeah, I mean, that has started to happen for me while I was at Sundance. Mm. Uh, a girl in the audience at one of the Q and A's after a screening stood up crying, and she was actually, she's actually from Texas, but she was in Utah, and she was wearing a UT burnt orange Texas shirt, and she was crying, and she was like, "Oh my God, like that's my story. Like I've never seen mm-hmm. my story on a big screen like that. You know, me, my, me and my family, we have struggled because." I got into UT and my family struggled because we didn't have the money. Mm. We, I, I had to get financial aid or grants, whatever. But they, she was, there was also that pressure, you know, of okay, getting in is one thing, but how are you going to afford to go through college? I mean, I have a girl, one of my best girlfriends, put herself through UT, waiting mm-hmm. tables and working in bars in Austin, and I mean, it's just very empowering to see my. Latina sisters, you know, I love it. See, I'm so strong, powerful, and educated, and wanting more, and knowing that they can do more. Mm. We, that's so we we don't have to look at ourselves as minority women. We're women, and we're just as much entitled, empowered, and worthy of these lead roles in life. Exactly, and you know what I also liked about your role is it wasn't like the. you know, what they usually cast Latinas for, you know, the maid and stereotypical, mm-hmm. you know, like they do for any minority. You, they want to stick you in a box. Oh, you, you're you black, so you play a thug. Or, you you know, you're this and that, so you play this. And I love to just see people stepping outside their boxes, boxes and showing people, not only people of our own race, but other people, look, I can be something else. I don't, I'm just not this. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm this and that and this and that and this and that. And since we're talking on, you know, woman empowerment and seeing minorities and roles, what do you think about this controversial controversy that's going on with Leslie being a lead role in the Ghostbuster film and everything that's being hurled at her because she dared to to, to be a lead in a, a huge blockbuster film and she's black, she's a black woman. And I guess people didn't approve that she's number one, a woman, number two, and number one, a minority. I mean, all of that makes her a minority. What do you, What are your thoughts on that? Duh. I mean, that's, it is sad. Yeah, I've heard about that. Even with, with what they did with the guy in the Star Wars posters, mm. like in like yeah. Um, uh, we just gotta keep. I want to say fighting, but we just gotta keep working. We gotta keep persevering. Just keep on going. Showing them different, teaching them different. Whoever it is, trying to keep us in these boxes, showing them. You know, working for it. I don't know. That's a touchy subject. 
It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. No, and she's just it, it another is. talented woman, you it know, is. on this film. But I had... mean, could you imagine? I got my first lead role, a huge film, other lead actresses. But she's black. But but being cut down. Mm -hmm. No or one else being she's touched. Mexican. You yeah. know, no one else being anything said about. But you, we're gonna single you out because you're you're to to some society people, you're not enough. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Like, oh, I just got my first, I got my first role. I, I just couldn't, it, it just, it made, it almost made me want to throw it, up. Well, even, I mean, if you really want to get real with it, I mean, Let's it go. doesn't have to be on a broad, big, you know, spectrum like that. I mean, mm -hmm. that's happening to me and I just had a role offered. I just worked on a role that was offered to me because the director tr uh, trusted me from another film and I just recently got dropped by my agents because I wasn't good enough. I wasn't making enough money. And then my feedback wasn't good. I mean, it doesn't matter. That's the thing. And I mean, getting too deep, maybe, but that's life. Like, you're never going to be good enough for some people. Hmm. But the people that know your worth, pay attention to that. Like, I mean, that's how you got this opportunity. Yeah. I mean, it just that takes that made, one yeah. sometimes. Wow. Just like it took that one to get her that role. Wow. All these other people can talk and be loud Say and be haters. You. But it took that one, and then there'll be another one, and then there'll be another one. And then you're not going to have any other choice but to believe yourself because my stain, my stench will be so big, <laughs> I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> Deal with it. Yeah. Learn the new way. Yes. I love it. That's it. I don't know. <laughs> No, I mean you're doing you're right in the right place at the right time where you need to be. I don't know if you know this, but every little thing that any minority does is is a chipping chipping away, chipping away. It's a chipping a chipping off the block. You know, we're we're chipping down stereotypes. We're we're taking more. We're just taking hammers to it, sledgehammers to it every little time. But you have to see it that way. I, I, but you, I think one thing you know a word that I don't really use. What? And you're using it. What? And I've heard people use it. What? Minority. I don't like that word because there's nothing minor about us. I love that. And there's no minority about us. We're I'm only speaking on Mexican or Latino people. We're everywhere. We're becoming the majority. So this whole minority word, it, I, it's not even in my vocabulary. And when people use it, it's sticks it's like this every time someone uses it because i'm like minority yeah no and i, I totally hear um hear you i'm kind of speaking to what is being said on the outskirts like i've never you know said myself as a minority i've never called myself a minority yeah, I've never... at, at all you've never heard me say that about myself but let's think about society and let's think about the film industry we i, I know i drive around all the time and i'm looking at these posters and i'm yeah. like Okay, let me see if I can spot one person that looks like me. Oh, oh there's one. Yeah. There's one in each on one yeah, TV they show. They throw one in to they shut throw, you up. Oh, 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 they throw another one. Yeah. Oh, two on that one. You know, I get a little excited when I see two. So, yeah, we, we have to keep that strong line frame. We're not, you're right. There's nothing minor about us. But from the outside looking in, we still have to show people why we are not minor. And I hate it. We were talking about this earlier. I hate that we, it, it's a constant struggle and I, it feels like a fight every day, but that's what we have to do. I mean, we've seen where our ancestors came from. You know, I, I did the after show for Roots and it just, it made me, it put me in such a bad spot, like mentally. I was just like, it, it was so disgusting the way I saw that my ancestors were treated, but they worked so hard to bring us to where we are today, mm, which is leaps and on. bounds. You focus on that because they want you to be happy. Exactly. And that's so where we are today, me, like our age and our, the people coming up from my end, we're going to even make further leaps. So I'm hoping we're not having the same conversation in 20 years because there's no such thing as minority. I'm, I mean, I mean, that's a far that's that's just like throwing it out there. I'm, but if we could get there. Wow. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Where we can cast roles and there's no preferences. Now I know when I, I'm going through submissions, I don't know what your your daily basis thing, but I, I I don't even filter them out. I look through every single one of them because when I used to filter them, it used to be like twenty of them. Then I filtered it and it was like it was like five. African American age range. I took the age out seven. But you know, it's, it gets, so I started submitting to everything, you know? Oh, you're looking for Caucasian? Well, you just don't really know what you like, want yet. You don't know what you want. Let me show you what I can do. 
and maybe you know sometimes I get called in. We have to start being bold, and I love that about roles that I've seen you do and, you know, All She Can and, you know, it, it, being in this big film, everything that you're doing is, like I said, it's chipping away at those stereotypes. It's chipping away at being minor, being a minority. It's helping. And I, I just hope you know that, Karina, because you're phenomenal and you're great. Um, I want to get to, let's get to know you a little bit. I mean, we have enough time. Yeah, we have about 15 minutes or so. So you're from Texas. I read somewhere that you have like a little secret thing that you like to do. Like, you like to design gowns. Oh, <laughs> you were like, I was like, don't make fun of my business. <laughs> no, I was like, what are you gonna say? Um, Kurt, I'm like, I was gonna like, like, like I'm not gonna put you out like that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's I do. a family show. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. I love designing gowns. I have designed a couple of my own. My first nomination when I got nominated uh, for Best Actress in a Feature for an Imahin, um, I designed my gown. I designed my gown then. I, I designed my quinceanera dress. <laughs> That's so I did. Cute. I didn't know that about you. I'm I, like, why I am I reading design. this? Oh, I love gowns. I love to get dressed up. I love the red carpet. Like, it, I love to get I'm sorry, glam. I have to say this. Please go look up Karina's pictures from the premiere of Suicide Squad. Stunning. Shut up. Uh, I mean, you. and you sent me some of these Stop photos. Stop it. Keep you going. Pick, <laughs> you didn't pick any of the um, pictures that, you didn't pick any of the dresses that you sent me. But I was just like, oh my gosh. Karina, I was blown away. Yeah, I like, love that black dress. It was so simple, but so... Beautiful. Yeah, I loved it. It was beautiful. It felt good. Oh my gosh. Can you tell, like, let our audience know what that experience was like, being at a premiere, being at the after party, rubbing shoulders and stuff. How was that? Um... <laughs> It was, it was, it was surreal again. <laughs> I say it was surreal because it's like you like dream of things like this. And you know, mm. I mean, it's not like, it's not like the goal, but these are some of the perks, you know, it's yeah. like, it was pretty cool. I mean, having my name called, you know, by the press and taking Carina, these pictures. Karina, 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 Karina. Yeah, <laughs> it was cool, man. It was so cool, so much fun. Wow, oh my, I'm, I swear, I'm, I'm kid you not, I'm living vicariously through your pictures. Every time you put one up, you're like, you put the picture of you and Jay Leto at the, oh, at yeah. the party, I was like, man, my God, that, that, nobody talked to me around. I'm like, <laughs> Jared Leto, oh my God. <laughs> I'd have been hey, like, Talking. Who brought that up? <laughs> they put it up. <laughs> they brought it up so that our viewers can see this beautiful oh. dress that she wore and how amazing she looked. She didn't that take any okay. of my recommendations. No, you were stunning at the premiere. There, I think that some of the better ones are at. Um... <laughs> Don't be looking up there. <laughs> oh. Oh, twirl. I know. I was like, girl, I was like, Dee -dee. you was working it. Karina, I'm, I'm just so yeah, yeah. proud of you. That's why I'm so happy. I don't get shy on the ring. I was like, Look at me. <laughs> I know. I saw the video. There was like, he was like hitting it. Mm, uh, mm. He was like, let me show it. you how to do it. Let me show you how to stunt. <laughs> he was like, let me show you how to do it. I loved it. I it mean, was it's fun. It's empowering. I mean, I don't know if you know this. Like, I, I know it's empowering for you, and it, you know, it really it feels you to keep going and stuff, especially when you get projects like this. But your friends, we're we're all rooting for you. I don't know how many people you saw was like, wow, Karina, that that that's amazing. You yeah. know, we know how hard you work. And you work hard. This, I mean, this is not easy. I don't think people can fathom yeah. what it's like to pursue acting on a serious level. Even a role like that, we're like, oh, it wasn't one of the lead roles. It was a smaller role, but that's still one in a, a million. How many people are going to be watching themselves on a big screen? Perspective. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. This she's so cool. She's from Texas. She's cool like that. You know, it's pretty cool. You know, whatever. You know. <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, well, I'm not going to hold anybody too long, but um, is there anything else you're working on that you want our audience to know about? Or um, any last words you want to, or advice you want to give to actors? Any, you know, any race that are looking and they're saying, you know, maybe I want to pursue acting or maybe I want to pursue something that I thought that I could not do, but let me give it a try. Let me, let me take those chances. Let me not give in to my fear. And take the chances. Exactly. Doesn't matter what people say. I mean, even at this point, people can think like, oh, she's made it. No, I mean, it's difficult. I mean, only you know what you're capable of and believe in yourself. Other people will have no other choice but to believe you. Like I, I said, 
I love that. And because especially in an industry where we deal with so much rejection and that that as a person can take a toll on you. I mean, we we talk about it all the time and I don't think people understand. We deal with more rejection in a year than people probably deal in their life. Mm -hmm. Every time we leave a a week. (laughs) Yes. Every time we leave a room, it's kind of like. I don't, did I do that right? You want to just Deflated, hit. you feel. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, even getting dropped by my agents recently just made me feel, it made me feel stupid. It no, did. No, they should feel. No, it, it, it made me feel really stupid because I was like, what am I doing? Like, am, am I really, am, do I think I'm, am I really just, is this all in my head? Like, am I just thinking too much of myself? Like, do I think I'm better no. than I really am? No. But stuff like when that, things like that happen. Yeah. It really makes you question, but those are the things you gotta ignore. You gotta, like I said, all you know, all you know what you're capable of, and even with the obstacles, just keep fighting. I love that, and you're capable of so, so much more. This is, I would say, this is only the beginning, but you've, I mean, you've had a career since you know your first breakout role, and there's only more to come from you, Karina. You have to know that. And that's, I mean, you're just such a testament to me and everyone else. Like, you have to keep going. When I see any of my friends in anything, it's just like, wow, I sat by that person. You know, Jim Perrick was in the movie. We didn't talk mm-hmm. about that. Who was a teacher for us. And yeah. he was also at Playhouse West and stuff. And you got to kind of, like, talk to him on set. And y- y'all yeah. all, you know, how was that, like, y'all's dialogue? Like, wow, you know, look at us. You know, we're, we're yeah. doing Suicide Squad now. We were sitting back in L.A. just you know, a year ago or something. How was that? Like, just talking oh, to him about me. this, the reality of where y'all are at right now. It was, it was, it was so cool because like you said, yeah, he was a teacher at Playhouse West, but I also had a class with him and I've done scenes with him. Yeah. Um, so it was really nice to see him and it felt good to see him because it was like, oh, I know someone, you know, it's like when you go to a new That's school cute. or something, you're like, <laughs> oh, hey, I know you. Uh, no, it was cool though. He's really cool. Um, he, he's worked with David before, too. Oh, okay. uh, so, um, yeah, we all we all felt comfortable. We were Talked all cool. Friends, buddies on set. Talked about the old time. You know, yeah, we're just doing these projects now. Yeah. That's so awesome. I want to thank Karina so much for coming in, doing the spotlight on. Um, I just really wanted everyone to get to know the great actress that is Karina and the, the person behind her because she – we're – look out for this girl. Trust me. And if you haven't seen Suicide Squad yet, go out and see it. It's so entertaining. It's good. I don't even go to the movies anymore. And I'm telling you, I saw it twice and I was enthralled every single time Mm -hmm. I saw it. It's so entertaining. It's not. Don't believe the haters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's the number one film. So I mean, well, everyone has their opinion, but the movie was dope. Period. It was dope. It was it's dope. good. It's really good. <laughs> I'm Erica J. Green. You can find me on all social media at Erica J. A. Y. E. Green. Karina? Uh, yeah, I'm Karina Calderon. <laughs> and uh, like I said, yeah, Miss Cody Calderon on Instagram, Twitter. Um, yeah. <laughs> on all social medias, you can find Karina. It's my only name, <laughs> Karina. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And this was After Bus Spotlight on with Karina Calderon. Said that right this time, huh? Yeah. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.